Mark, nice to talk. How are you today, Pat? Okay? I'm good. Good to see you. Sitting right here in uh, New York, getting ready to head out to the ballpark soon. There you have it. Good to see you on the road. That's an excellent job here. Tampa's not playing that well right now. Haven't hit. Bad series in Fenway. They were 2-0, and now they're under 500. Mark, give me a little synopsis. What can you tell me? Yeah, I mean, they haven't hit. That's definitely part of it, but they also haven't pitched very well, both uh, from the front end or from the bullpen. It's been a very unlike uh, Tampa Bay start to this season. They are, I think, 11th in ERA, maybe 12th in, in batting average. Uh, the bullpen has blown leads in a bunch of games. It, it's not quite the team they expected. They've had a bunch of injuries, as others have, but certainly in their bullpen, they're missing four guys that they had planned to be in that bullpen at the start of the year, and uh, it's taken a toll. So it has been a little bit of a rough start. I think they've lost. They've lost 8 of 11 since starting 2-0, and, and and it's been a rough stretch for sure. All right. They brought in a lot of pitchers to replace Morton and, of course, Snell. Watka, Rich Hill, uh, Colin McHugh. How is, you know, even Archer? I know Archer's out right now. So they brought four in to replace two. How's the math worked out so far? I think you'd say they went with the quantity over quality approach. Is that is that the management theory that you'd expound yeah, there? So yes. It hasn't been great, and I think that, you know, they expected a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of a slow start. They, those guys weren't fully stretched out in the spring. Archer looked really good until he left the game, you know, two innings, his second appearance. Rich Hill had a really ba bad one, a really good one, and a so-so one last night. Um, McHugh's been working out of the bullpen. Waka, uh, not great. They had him to come out of the pen last time. He's going to start tonight, so maybe he'll look a little crisper back in his normal routine, but... You know, part of it, uh, Chris, is this is a little bit of a bridge situation. They've got these really good young pitchers that they wanted to send down. They didn't want to have them start the season in the big leagues. They wanted them to kind of build up after last year. Everyone's concerned about the 60 to 162 jump on the pitching staff. Every team talks about it. But with these young guys, I'm talking about Shane McClanahan, Luis Patina. Now, Josh Fleming did get called up. He pitched the other night. He pitched pretty well. He took Archer's spot. So, you know, slowly but surely this is going to evolve at some point this year unless the veterans do really well I mean obviously there, there's that scenario but I think this is a you know try to get through the first month or two see where they are and then see if these young kids are ready to, to come in and be really impactful type guys they want to keep them all starters I mean I think it's a fair question should they have you know maybe used one of them in like a Josh Hader role a multi-inning role I mean Shane McClanahan in that role would seem like a pretty darn good weapon but yeah, I guess applaud their their uh, consistency and sticking with their plan and keeping these guys as starters. All right, now uh, the hit batsman against the Yankees is interesting. You've seen every pitch in every game. I have not. I mean, I have seen some. Uh, it's hard to read the intention. I know Sabathia has a lot to do with this. Going back a few years, a lot of bad blood. You expect some this weekend. How does Tampa retaliate after what happened late last weekend uh, down in Tampa? Give me your thoughts there. Go ahead. Well, I, I think, you know, certainly it's been a major topic of conversation. I, I think the Rays are upset. I think there's some validity to them being upset because the pitches, I saw you just showed it, the pitch that hit Wendell, the pitch that hit Meadows on the shoulder were both, you know, shoulders and above. That That's not what you're supposed to do. People in baseball know that's, that's out of line. If you're going to hit a guy, you hit him in the butt, you hit him in the leg, maybe you hit him in the ribs. You don't hit a guy up high unless you're doing something on purpose or your control is really horrible. Uh, the Yankees claim Jordan Montgomery didn't have control Sunday. I don't know. The Rays obviously disagree. But this does go back a ways, and it happened a lot last year, and there's a lot of chirping from the dugouts, and, and we heard it last year because there were no fans there. Uh, it'll be a little interesting. You know, this year we're not going to hear it as much, but the dugout was very upset Sunday when Meadows got hit. And, and the one thing we haven't seen yet, and, and I think this is fair to say, I mean, maybe somebody's going to go back to the video and tell me I'm wrong here, but we haven't really seen the Rays retaliate. It's happened. The Yankees have hit a couple guys. When the, the Rays hit two guys that last weekend, they were both instant replay on balls in the dirt. I mean, that wasn't really hitting batters. So the box score shows the Rays hit two guys. They didn't really hit two guys. So I don't know. Do they get on the aggressiveness? Do they go offensive tonight and throw at somebody right away? Did the umpires take it out of everyone's hands and issue a warning? They were pretty quick with the warning Sunday at Tropicana Field. So I, I do think that there will be something. This is also – the Rays' first trip back, Chris, from last September when Chapman threw the pitch at Mike Brasso's head, that 100.5-mile-an-hour fastball, and then Mike Brasso got the uh, karma. Karma is a bitch revenge of hitting the home run that basically clinched the ALCS for the Rays over the Yankees. 
And I wonder if Cash got a note from the commissioner's office because he was a little rough. And I, he's right. But they, they can say anything they want. He is right. I, I thought the commissioner's office, they, uh, oh, the whoever dis decided to discipline was light with Chapman. I mean, you know, he only got a couple of games. My guy almost killed him. I mean, now I understand that, you know, he got his back in the postseason. But I know Cash made that comment last week about how it was mishandled, right. which is strong words from a manager. Uh, you know, which I was, uh, you know, I raised an eyebrow. Let me get your take on that for a sec. Go ahead. Yeah, I think grossly mishandled, in fact. He went with the adjective in front of the word there, so he even went deeper. Look, I, I think you're right. I, I also was surprised. I don't know if he got fined or not. He obviously hasn't shared that if he did or if he got talked to. But, you know, his, his point was pretty good. Araldis Chapman only got a three-game suspension. Um, you know, Joe Kelly got a much bigger suspension, what, eight games, I think, originally, and then it was reduced for some, some similar type of fence earlier in the season. But Chapman got three games out of 60 that was then reduced to two, but he doesn't have to serve it till this season. So it actually became two games out of 162 rather than three out of 60. Even I can do that math. That, that really watered it down quite a bit. So I think that's part of what the Rays were ticked about. And also that Tanaka, who obviously isn't here this year to serve anything, but didn't get anything last year when he hit with you know Wendell at the start of that game, which the Rays felt was incredibly blatant. So yeah, they're, they've been a little annoyed since then. And, and I think part of what Cash's message was MLB could have put a stop to this if they had come out with a stern punishment for uh, Chapman and or for Tanaka. Instead, MLB has allowed this to go on. And, you know, it's interesting, the schedule, spring training, they didn't play. Sometimes you see these scores get settled in spring training. It's happened before. They didn't play when the schedules got redone. So that was the first time that they had met uh, last week at the Trop since that playoff series. And in, which, in the playoff series, there really wasn't any hit batters because the stakes were higher. So that also kind of makes you think, you know, these guys know what they're doing. And, you know, there is some intent and there is some scores to be settled, but they knew not to do it at that stage. Excellent job, Mark. You always, uh, you're honest. You do a heck of a job for us. Keep in touch. Enjoy the weekend in a ballpark. Thanks so much here today. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it.